I just received this and I got the perfect project to try it out. And in today's episode, we're going to be using styrofoam in order to create underwater rocky terrain. In order to do that, we're going to be using this foam factory hot wire cutter that I just received in the mail. Now this video is not sponsored by Foam Factory, nor am I affiliated with the company in any way. I just saw the product being used in other videos. I ordered it online, it arrived, and now I can't wait to use it. So let's head to the table. We're going to be working with this expanded polystyrene, which is more commonly known as styrofoam. This stuff is widely available for free since it's very common as a packing material. You may end up having to search out large blocks or shapes that you'll find useful. We're going to be using our freehand router from Foam Factory in order to shape the styrofoam. The free router comes with wire that you can mold into different shapes. I've already molded this wire into the shape I want. We then attach the wire to the freehand router and secure the screw so the wire doesn't move. When the wire heats up, it will carve out the exact shape that we've molded into the wire. It's very important that you work in a well-ventilated area. We'll start with this block of styrofoam. We turn on the cutter and place it over the foam. We place the router on the foam and jiggle it back and forth away from the foam block in order to create the surface texture we want. We then remove the excess foam from the block. We're left with this awesome texture on the foam. All we have to do is repeat this process over and over on the block in order to get the final shape we want. It's very helpful to have a fan blowing the smoke away from the foam cutter and yourself. Since the freehand router comes with several wires, we can experiment with different shapes. We want to avoid creating sharp angles with the wire. Sharp angles weakens the wire and increases the likelihood of it breaking. I'm going to create some shallow grooves with this wire in order to change the shape of the cuts that we make on the foam. I want to create some rocky walls with an aquatic flavor to them. I want the rocky walls to be modular so that I can change their layout in order to suit my needs at the table. I want to experiment with the freehand router in order to create as many different textures as I can. However, I do want all of the aquatic walls to have a similar flowing pattern on them. For this craft, I want to use some flowing, draping, or dripping shapes on the walls. Using this tool effectively is going to take some practice. When the router has been on for a minute, it cuts very quickly, so I can quickly jigger the tool around in order to create interesting textures. Next I'll take another wire and shape it into a simple box and attach it to the router. Anytime you change your wires, make sure to unplug the router from the power source. Even though the router cools quickly, you don't want to risk any injuries. Next I want to create some doorways or cave entrances to use with our walls. I'll use a mini to roughly measure out the size that I want and mark the foam. Then with the free router I'll cut the rough shape of an entrance or a tunnel. We switch back to our wavy wireframe in order to cut our foam archway. I'll start on the inside of the passage. By shaking the router as I move around the perimeter of the entrance, I add texture and increase the size of the portal. Next I add texture to the outside of the wall. I don't want to cut too deep on this block since I don't want to weaken the archway. Next I'm going to experiment with a much larger block of styrofoam. I want to create a large rocky mound that could serve as a centerpiece of an aquatic encounter. I'll change how I'm using the freehound router as I shape the block. I think it's okay to flip the tool over and remove styrofoam I've already carved. I can also use discrete parts of the router, not just the entire wire in order to create interesting shapes. In the past I've used kitchen knives, hobby knives, and box cutters, and all manner of cutting tools in order to create rocks. However this tool gives me much more control over the shapes that I create. And because I can shape the cutting wire, I have a lot more options available to me in order to create interesting shapes and textures. Next I want to put a base on all the styrofoam scatter I've created. I'm going to use chipboard which is highly compressed cardboard. I'm also going to cover the chipboard with textured tin foil. We've used these materials quite a lot in series 3. Not only does the crumpled tin foil create a texture on the base, it will also prevent the chipboard from curling when we paint it. It will also reduce the wear and tear on the edges and corners of the chipboard. 
Of course, the base will also prevent our scatter terrain from falling over on the table during gameplay. You'll want to do this for all your aquatic scatter rocks that are too lightweight to stand on their own. Next, we're going to need to mix a large batch of Mod Podge and Dark Grey paint. Those who've been watching Series 3 videos know that this will serve as our primer and base coat on all our aquatic terrain. Make sure you mix enough to cover all your builds twice. Next, we coat all our aquatic scatter terrain and walls with the Mod Podge mixture. The glue in the Mod Podge will reinforce the fragile styrofoam against prodding fingers at the table. It will also help protect the tiny styrofoam protrusions left by the cutting process. Make sure to get the mixture in all the nooks and crannies. The white styrofoam should make it easy to spot anything you've missed. Next, while the Mod Podge is still wet, I'm going to be adding some extra texture by sprinkling some decorative sand on our build. I'm using the sand quite sparingly since I want to keep the texture of the carved styrofoam quite vivid. However, I'll add more texture around the base and large flat surfaces. Now that the large scatter piece is dried, I've noticed that these outer edges of the styrofoam have lifted from the base. This would have occurred because I didn't apply enough glue close to the edge of the foam. Since the hot glue will melt the styrofoam, I didn't want to risk melting the fine details our carving left behind. So I didn't push the hot glue right to the edge of the foam. To fix this, we simply cover the gaps with some rocky aggregate. We can add some hot glue and pour some decorative and fish tank rocks over the gaps and let it all settle together. We can use a craft stick to press the rocks into the glue and give the piles a little shape. Since we need to apply a second layer of our Mod Pod mixture to our scatter terrain, we can cover the aggregate and the rest of the build at the same time. Some might consider the amount of Mod Podge I use on my scatter terrain excessive. However, I want these pieces to last for years and years, not just a few sessions. The final step is to apply our turquoise overbrush. Of course, the Mod Podge should be completely dry before painting over it. I'm going to use this very large brush since I'm overbrushing the ridges of all our aquatic rocks and walls. The overbrushing will create a more solid and vivid layer of color rather than a dusty layer like dry brushing does. To overbrush you need only lightly load your brush and remove the excess paint on your palette. Then you drag your brush over the leading edges of your terrain. If you want to add color to the nooks and crannies, you can just brush against the grain of the texture. There's more of an explanation of dry brushing and overbrushing in our foundations video on the subject. When adding this final turquoise paint to your scatter terrain, it might be interesting to combine both dry brushing and overbrushing on the same piece. Leaving the dark recesses completely unpainted will make the piece look more cavernous. However, it might also leave the piece with an unfinished or incomplete appearance. It never hurts to experiment on a small piece or in a corner of a larger terrain piece. When your final turquoise layer is dry, you're done! It was very helpful to do this build in assembly line stages. After your build is completed, you may want to add things like coral or shells or seaweed or a colored wash or anything else that might highlight the aquatic feel of your build. I've chosen not to add any other decorative elements so I can use this piece for fey terrain or in the underdark or on alien worlds. I'll place additional scatter near these pieces to show my players what environments their characters are in. If you have any suggestions for decorations that you'd add to your build, I'd like to hear from you in the comments section down below. If you'd like to support what we're doing here at the Gamesmith, please hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, please hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment. You might also check out our blog at thegamesmith.org. We post the building materials for all our crafts on our website too. You might also check us out on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.